In sections 6 and 7, we're going to learn about temperature scales and density, which can be used as a conversion factor. So the learning outcomes for this section are to convert between Celsius and Kelvin and Fahrenheit and Celsius scales. Temperature is a measure of heat flow. And remember that heat flows from objects that have more heat to objects that have less heat. So when you think about how a thermometer works, you place it in an object that is hot, heat flows into the thermometer to cause an expansion of the fluid with inside, and you see it go up, the temperature go up. There are three basic temperature scales that we are going to use. Uh, because we live in the U.S., we have Fahrenheit, and water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and it boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Celsius is the metric version, and water freezes at 0 degrees C, and it boils at 100 degrees C. And in Kelvin, this is an absolute temperature scale, there are no degrees of Kelvin. Uh, so water freezes at 273.15 Kelvin, and it boils at 373.15 Kelvin. So you can actually see that the size of the Kelvin and the size of the Celsius scale are exactly the same. To convert between the temperature scales, we have an equation. To go from Fahrenheit to Celsius, you take the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, minus 32, that accounts for the zero point, times 5 degrees C for every 9 degrees Fahrenheit, and that will give you the temperature in degrees C. You can also reverse that to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit, or you take the temperature in Celsius, multiply by 9 fifths for Fahrenheit to Celsius, and then you add the 32, which again accounts for the zero point. Now with Kelvin, to go from temperatures in degree C to Kelvin, you simply add 273.15. So let's practice. The average daytime temperatures on Earth and Jupiter are 72 degrees Fahrenheit and 313 Kelvin, respectively. Calculate the difference in temperature in degree C between these two planets. So, we're going to start this problem like we would any other problem. We're going to pull out the relevant information. So, the temperature on Earth is 72 degrees Fahrenheit, and the temperature on Jupiter is equal to 313 Kelvin. And it says, calculate the difference in temperature. So, temperature in Earth minus the temperature in Jupiter. Uh, you could go the other way. Uh, in degree C equals, I don't know, degree C. So we have to convert these both into degree C. So let's start off with temperature in Jupiter in degree C. That's the easy one. Remember that to get the Kelvin temperature, you take the temperature in degree C and you add to 73.15. Therefore, to get the temperature in degree C, you would take the Kelvin temperature and subtract 273.15. So, temperature in degree C is equal to the 313 Kelvin minus 273.15, and we get, we get 39. 0.85, which in the correct number of significant figures is 40, with a decimal point degrees C. So 40 degrees C. The temperature on Earth in degrees C is equal to the 72 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 times the 5 degrees C for every 9 degrees Fahrenheit, and that gives us an answer of 22 degrees C. Now, what we're looking for is the difference between the temperature on Earth and the temperature on Jupiter. And, well, we can see that the temperature on Jupiter is higher than the temperature on Earth, so we're going to go ahead and just reverse that. So we'll have 40 degrees C. Now, that's got a dot, so that's a significant figure, minus... 22 degrees C, and we are left with a temperature difference of 18 degrees C between Earth and Jupiter. 
In this section, we're going to use density uh, to calculate density from relevant information and to use density as a conversion factor. Density is a measure of the mass to volume ratio of an object. It's essentially a matter concentration. The higher the density, the more matter there is per unit volume. And we have an equation, density is equal to mass over volume. And you can also make a circle, and you can remember this by the top is m, and then you have bottom pi and in d and v. You can remember this as my dog vomits. And what's nice about this is what you can do is you can cover up one of the units. If we cover up density, it's mass over volume. If we cover up mass, if we're looking for mass, it would be density times volume. If we're looking for volume, it's mass over density. So we can actually simplify the algebra quite a lot by using this little density wheel. So let's practice. A material will float on the surface of a liquid if the material has a density less than that of the liquid. Given that the density of water is approximately 1.0 grams per milliliter, will a block of material having a volume of 1.2 times 10 to the fourth cubic inches and weighing 350 pounds float or sink when placed in a reservoir of water? So the first thing we should do is we should pull out all relevant information. The mass is 350 pounds, the volume is 1.2 times 10 to the fourth cubic inches, and the volume of water is 1.0 grams per milliliter. Now we can see that the unit system we have, or pounds and cubic inches, is not in the metric system where our density is. So we need to convert pounds to grams and cubic inches into milliliters in order to calculate the density in the same units in order to compare the density of the object and the density of water. So converting pounds to grams using the 453.6 grams equals one pound conversion factor, we see that the mass is 158,760 grams. Remember, at this point, I do not want to count my sig figs. I want to wait until the very end of the problem in order to determine the sig figs. So next, let's convert volume into milliliters. Now, I don't know anything about cubic inches in terms of volume, but what I do know is that there are 2.54 centimeters in one inch. So I can actually use that knowledge and the knowledge that volume is length times width times height to determine the volume in cubic centimeters. So what I'll do is I will multiply by the conversion factor 2.54 centimeters per inch three times. Now you can see that what I could have done is I could have cubed every number and unit there. So I could have done 2.54 cubed centimeters cubed over one cubed inches cubed and I would have gotten the same thing. Now there is one other conversion factor that we can add and that is that one milliliter is one cubic centimeter and we get 196,644 milliliters. So we've got the mass, we've got the volume, we can take density is equal to mass over volume. So if I take the mass of 158760 grams over 196644 milliliters, the density of the object is 0 0.8073 grams per milliliter. Uh, now, if I want to make sure that my significant figures are correct, we should go back and double check. We started off with two significant figures in my mass, so really I should have two significant figures in the mass, and I started off with two in the volume, so I should have two in the volume. Therefore, my total number of significant figures, two over two, should just be two, which leads me to 0 0.81 grams per milliliter. And we see that that is indeed smaller than the 1.0 grams per milliliter. Therefore, the object would float if thrown into a reservoir. All right, for some more practice, the density of pure silver is 10.5 grams per cubic centimeter at 20 degrees C. If 5.25 grams of pure silver pellets is added to a graduated cylinder containing 11.2 milliliters of water, to what volume level would the water in the cylinder rise? This is one of the type of problems where it might be helpful to draw a small picture. 
So if I draw a picture of the graduated cylinder, it's filled with water to 11.2 millimeters. If I have pellets of silver that I add into there, the water level will go up. What water level is that? Well, that change in water level is going to be the volume of the pellets. So, let's take out some relevant information out of here. We've got the density of silver is equal to 10.5 grams per cubic centimeter. We've got the mass of the silver pellets equaling 5.25 grams and the volume initial in the cylinder is 11.2 milliliters and what we're trying to find is the final volume we don't know what that is in milliliters so from our picture we know that when we add the silver pellets the water level will rise and that rise is the volume of the silver we know the equation for density is equal to mass over volume but now we want to find out what volume of silver we have so we can rearrange the equation to volume is equal to mass over density and plugging in our values for mass and density 5.25 grams over 10.5 grams per cubic centimeter when we do the math we get the answer of 0 0.500 cubic centimeters uh, with three significant figures being the uh, needed number of sig figs and the answer to 5.25 divided by 10.5 is exactly 0.5. But, remember I need to have three sig figs because there were three sig figs in both my mass and my density. So my answer in volume has to have three sig figs. Now that didn't answer the question. We want to find out what is the final volume. That means that the change in volume is 0.5 uh, cubic centimeters. Well, recall from the last problem that a cubic centimeter and a milliliter are exactly the same size. So what we would do to determine the volume final, we take the volume initial plus the change, and that is the Greek letter delta. Capital Greek delta is used for the change, uh, the change in volume. So this is equal to 11.2 milliliters plus 0 0.500 milliliters, and our final volume, V final, is equal to 11.7 milliliters with the correct number of sig figs.